Welcome to my anime recap channel. In this video, I will be recapping the anime series, The Apothecary Diaries. Mao Mao, a resident of the Red Light District, is asked by her father to deliver medicine to the Verdigris house, warning her to be wary of the recent kidnappings. Mao Mao complies and departs for the Verdigris house. Upon arrival, she finds the brothel's madam dealing with customers excited to see Perrin one of the three princesses of the house. Mao Mao enters the medicine room, where she begins writing while observing a wound on her left arm. Perrin enters and scolds Mao Mao for her wounds, which Mao Mao explains are the result of her usual drug experiments. As they talk, the madam enters and warns Mao Mao not to set off another explosion with her so-called experiments, lest she be forced to become a courtesan. Annoyed, Mao Mao quickly informs the madam that she has left the medicine and leaves, just before two other women enter the room, thinking they heard her voice. As Mao Mao walks to the herb plot, she curses the madam for always trying to make her into a courtesan. Once she reaches the herb plot, she is kidnapped by human traffickers. Mao Mao worries about her father's anxiety as her captors take her to their destination, the Imperial Palace. As winter falls, Lady Lihua gives birth to a prince with the support of the rear palace physician. Meanwhile, Lady Gyokyu rejoices at the news of the prince's safe delivery while holding her own daughter, Princess Lingli. Three months later, Mao Mao frets about her father and mourns her former life as an ordinary apothecary. She reflects on how the rear palace is no different from a brothel, a garden of beautiful women meant to bear the emperor's children. No men are allowed in this garden except the emperor, his kin, and the eunuchs, individuals who were, formerly male, after losing their manhood. The rear palace is a collection of two thousand concubines and servants, and a thousand eunuchs. Unlike the high-dash, mid-dash, and low-ranking concubines, serving girls like Mao Mao are expendable and can lose their lives at any moment. While Mao Mao is working, Xiaolan rushes in and asks her to read the tag on a piece of clothing. Mao Mao reads the tag and tells her the location of the item. She comments that most of the servants are illiterate and are only taught the bare essentials of etiquette. Although Mao Mao knows that she would earn more if she worked as a literate servant, her kidnappers would take the raise. While it is possible for servants to become low-ranking concubines, Mao Mao does not have the looks for it so she decides to lay low and avoid trouble during her two-year term. She also laments not being able to drink. While they are doing laundry, Xiaolan tells Mao Mao about a super handsome eunuch who works in the central area of the rear palace. Everyone is talking about him, and Xiaolan complains that she wants to see him. She asks Mao Mao if she wants to see him too, but Mao Mao is not interested. Meanwhile, Jin Shi, Gao Shun, and the physician visit Lady Lihua because she and her three-month-old son are not well. However, the physician cannot figure out what is wrong with either of them, much to Lady Lihua's frustration. As Jin Shi and Gao Shen are leaving the Crystal Pavilion, they meet Hong Yang, who takes them to the Jade Pavilion because the six-month-old Princess Ling Li is also sick and needs to be seen by the physician. However, the physician is busy attending to the prince, and is not available to examine the princess. While the servants are eating lunch, they express their concern about the prince and princess being sick. Xiaolan overhears them and suddenly concludes that it must be a curse, confusing Mao Mao. Xiaolan explains the rumor circulating about the deaths of heirs born in the rear palace. So far, all three of the emperor's heirs have died from sudden illnesses. Mao Mao is surprised to hear this, while Xiaolan expects the same to happen to the current two heirs as well. Mao Mao asks if the heirs are actually sick, and Xiaolan confirms that the physician has visited both Lady Gyokyu and Lady Lihua. The two servants discuss the possibility of the emperor taking in empress. The first candidate is Lady Lihua, who recently gave birth to a son, but the emperor also favors Lady Gyokyu. The power struggle between the two women may be related to the curse, plaguing Lady Lihua's son. 
Xiaolan goes on to say that Lady Li Huan may be worse off because the physician is with her more often. Hearing that Lady Li Hua is also sick surprises Mao Mao. Xiaolan says that both Lady Li Hua and the prince are apparently suffering from headaches, stomach aches, and nausea, which Mao Mao finds odd. Xiaolan again expresses her belief that it is a curse, while Mao dismisses her as being stupid, much to Xiaolan's annoyance. Meanwhile, a weak Lady Li Hua worries and frets about her son's health. Mao Mao is still pondering her conversation with Xiaolan, contemplating the possible causes of the headaches, stomach aches, and nausea that the prince and princess are experiencing. She considers the possibility of poisoning, but dismisses it because the princess is also sick, which would be unusual for deliberate poisoning, which is typically related to the issue of the crown imperial heir. Even after further contemplation, she cannot reach a conclusion based on rumors alone. Therefore, she decides to investigate for herself by visiting the area where the high-ranking concubines reside. She witnesses an argument between Lady Li Hua and Lady Gyokuyu near the Crystal Pavilion. Lady Li Hua slaps Lady Gyokuyu and accuses her of cursing her son because Lady Gyokuyu gave birth to a daughter. Lady Gyokuyu denies the accusation stating that Lady Li Hua clearly knows it is not true because her own daughter, Princess Ling Li, is also sick and suffering. She explains that she arrived at Lady Li Hua's residence to request the physician's assistance for her daughter. The physician is flustered by the situation, which annoys Mao Mao. She can clearly understand what is happening with the two concubines based on their condition and can guess why the heirs are sick. She wonders if the physician is unaware of the cause. Mao Mao knows that it is not a curse and tries to think of a way to discreetly inform the two concubines about the situation. She begins to search for writing materials. As Mao Mao contemplates leaving the palace, Jin Shi, who has heard about the commotion, arrives with Gao Shun to disperse the situation. He overhears Mao Mao muttering something about the prince, but dismisses it as having misheard. Later, while walking around the crystal pavilion, she notices a flower with a piece of cloth tied to it on the windowsill. She ignores it and throws it away. Not even a month later the prince passes away. Mao Mao is saddened by the news, knowing that she failed to save his life. Meanwhile, Jin Shi and Gao Shun visit the Jade Pavilion where Lady Gyokuyu presents Jinshu with a piece of cloth that was tied to a rhododendron flower and left on the windowsill. She had received the flower on the same day she had the argument with Lady Lihua at the Crystal Pavilion. The message on the piece of cloth read, The white face powder is poison. Don't let the baby touch it. Upon reading the message, Lady Gyokuyu realizes that ignorance is truly a sin. She and Jinshu contemplate who sent the message. It could not have been the palace physician, since the message was presented in a roundabout way, and the palace physician never discovered the source of the prince's illness. Lady Gyokuyu asks for Jinshu's help to locate the person who sent the message. Jinshu remembers hearing a female servant muttering something about poison on the day of the argument. He agrees to Lady Gyokuyu's request and asks permission to borrow the piece of cloth. On a later day, Xiaolan informs Mao Mao that the emperor has been visiting Lady Gyokuyu frequently to show his love for the surviving princess. Mao Mao asks Xiaolan if she has heard anything about Lady Lihua, but Xiaolan does not have any news. Suddenly, a eunuch arrives and asks Mao Mao to report to the matron of the serving women immediately. Mao Mao is unhappy about the situation, as it is not common for a high-ranking official to summon the serving girls. She wonders if it is just for some other work. As the girls enter the room under the watchful eyes of Gao Shun, he notices Mao Mao's repaired skirt. Jin Shi arrives in the room and thanks the girls for coming. He receives a signal from Gao Shun and begins writing something on a piece of paper. The serving girls are smitten by Jin Shi's looks but Mao Mao is bothered by the arrival of an arrogant-looking woman. Jin Shi introduces himself as the manager of the rear palace. 
Hearing his voice, Mao Mao realizes that the woman is a man and identifies him as the good-looking eunuch that Xiaolan mentioned before. As Jin Shi continues to write, Mao Mao comments on the wastefulness of such a handsome man becoming a sterile eunuch. Jin Shi finishes writing his message, which reads, You with the freckles stay here. He shows it to the gathered serving girls. Mao Mao is surprised to read the message, and the nearby serving girls are confused. Jin Shi dismisses the serving girls and tells them to return to their room. The serving girls are surprised, but they slowly start to leave as ordered. Mao Mao is stuck contemplating the situation, wondering how she ended up getting Jin Shi's attention. She thinks it might be related to the message she sent earlier. She realizes too late that it was all a trap. Since most of the serving girls are illiterate, no one other than Mao Mao can read the message. This reveals her as the writer of the message. As she tries to escape, Jin Shi casually catches her and reminds her that he told her to stay behind. He tells her to follow him quietly. Mao Mao is annoyed that the handsome eunuch touched her, and she even dusts off the spot he touched. As they walk, Jin Shi mentions that Mao Mao's background record says she is illiterate. Mao Mao casually tries to feign innocence, saying that she is of low birth, and there must have been some mistake. Mao Mao resolves to not admit anything and pretend to be ignorant, until the end to make things easier for herself. She is frustrated and wonders how Jin Shi found out about the message, as she was very secretive about it. She immediately labels Jin Shi as a mistrustful person and wonders why he isn't doing something else rather than targeting her. Jin Shi and Mao Mao arrive at the Jade Pavilion, and Hong Yang welcomes them inside. Mao Mao wonders whether she will be punished and hopes she makes it out alive. They arrive at the room of Lady Gyokyu, who is holding the healthy and laughing Princess Lingli. Seeing Princess Lingli healthy, Mao Mao is glad that she was saved. Lady Gyokyu thanks Mao Mao for saving the life of her daughter, which makes Mao Mao flustered. She says that she isn't worthy of such kindness. Lady Gyokyu expresses that any amount of gratefulness isn't enough for saving the life of her daughter, but Mao Mao, fearing getting too involved, decides to feign ignorance. She says that they must have mistaken her for someone else, which confuses Lady Gyokyu. Jin Shi steps in and says that Mao Mao provided him with the message written on the cloth. As Mao Mao tries harder to feign ignorance, Jin Shi also points out that the cloth used to write the message is something issued only for the serving girls, especially those who handle laundry like her. He asks her whether she ripped her skirt or not. With no way out, Mao Mao finally gives up. When Jin Shi asks Mao Mao why she wrote a message and left it with a flower, she replies that she had figured out the reason behind the situation on that day. The makeup powder was the main cause. Many courtesans in the brothel where Mao Mao grew up had used similar high end powder and eventually been poisoned and killed by it. They had traded their lives for beauty, but in the end, they lost both. Mao Mao reveals that before she started working in the rear palace, she was something of an apothecary and was very familiar with poisons. Jin Shi asks Lady Gyokyu about the powder, and she informs him that the baby's nurse had used it. The nurse had said that the whitening effect of that powder was better than the other ones. The nurse had suddenly taken ill, so Lady Gyokyu had given her a leave of absence and paid her wages. Lady Gyokyu again contemplates that being ignorant is a sin, as she didn't pay attention to what her daughter was putting in her mouth. Jin Shi also feels guilty, knowing that if he had known the information earlier, he could have saved the lives of many others, including the prince. Lady Gyokyu states that after seeing the message, she quickly tried to inform Lady Lihua about it, but because of the incident before, Lady Lihua had grown more distrustful of her and didn't listen to her warnings. In the end, Mao Mao asks what she can do for them. Lady Gyokia happily responds that she wants Mao Mao to immediately start working for her, as the new lady-in-waiting. Her plans of keeping a low profile completely ruined, Mao Mao leaves the Jade Pavilion in hysterics. Like and comment if you enjoyed this video. 
subscribe to my channel for more anime recaps, and tell me what anime recap you'd like to see next in the comments below.